Hi everyone, welcome to my Autodesk screencast. My name is Zan Ta and I work for Repro Products in Smyrna, Georgia. I am an Autodesk certified instructor and hold many certifications in multiple Autodesk products for the AEC industry. I hope you enjoy my screencast. If you'd like to see more of my screencast, please search for VAR 2015, that's V-A-R 2015, or my name. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up after you watch it. In today's screencast, we'll be taking a look at Revit 2016 and how to bring a point cloud file into Revit for the purposes of modeling. Here I am in Revit 2016. I can go to the Insert tab of the ribbon, Links panel, and click Point Cloud. From here, it will open up a window called Link Point Cloud, and it will ask us to select the RCP file um, that is the point cloud file to insert. Select it once, check the name, check the file type, and check the positioning. Hit open. Point cloud file will come in. You'll want to take a look at it in plan. You'll want to take a look at it in elevation. And you'll also want to take a look at it in 3D. Things that you will most likely need to do right off the bat is verify that it's on the correct level. So a default project has level 1 and level 2, 1 in, at 0 and 10 feet. So you'll have to take your point cloud file and move it up or down or however you need to move it in accordance with where it's sitting. Now this can be as precise as you can get it to be based upon your 3D scan. If the point cloud file has coordinate information already uh, set up, you can actually acquire that information as well. Once the point cloud file is in the Revit environment, you can start to use it as a frame of reference to start building your Revit model content it's the exact same similar workflow as if you were to insert a CAD file and bring it in as a 2D CAD file and draw on top of it, if you will, 3D objects. If we select that point cloud file, there's some information that's available to us. Uh, we see that it has phase created and phase demolished capability. So most people will typically put it as existing because it's existing scan data. We also have, once we select it, we can go to the type properties and see what scale it is set for, and this can be adjusted if you need to. Now that that's set up properly, if we go to the level one floor plan view, we can see how it looks in the software. If we need to rotate it, we can also rotate it as well. So I'm going to select it and rotate it. I'm going to place a point being, say, here. And I will rotate it from that plane to horizontal. And as you can tell, I can actually click onto the point cloud file. So it, it reads that 3D point cloud file as data that can be tangible, if you will. Now that you've done this, things that you may want to consider doing are adjusting the view range. We know that the cut plane is set at four feet by default. If we take that down to two feet and hit apply, you can see data either disappearing or coming into view. And so depending on the data that you're working with, you may want to adjust the cut plane. You may want to make several views, if you will, of level one and at different cut planes so you can kind of look at it in a slicing manner. You have the ability, obviously, to create sections. So we'll create building sections, say here, and take it to a certain visibility level. We'll create another one here and also tell it to look at a certain extent. If we look at it in 3D, we have the ability to turn on the section box. Now that that section box is turned on, if we take that view cube and right click and orient it to a particular view, let's say for example, the first section, then it shows us the data based upon where that section cut is. Okay, And this will help us to start to read and understand the information better. One of the biggest complaints people will initially tell you is, I can't see the point cloud data very well even though there's a lot of points. There's some things that you can do to make adjustments to it in Revit. If you open up the Visibility Graphics dialog box and go to Point Clouds, you can see that there's a color mode here and you can switch it to any one of these other choices. If I pick Elevation, for example, it'll start to look like this. If I switch it to a different one, say Intensity, then it'll look like that. And then lastly, um, 
it will take time for you to play with it and get a feeling for how it looks and what it needs to look like. Um, and so people will go through the process of creating as many sections in uh, plan and uh, elevation as they need to. And they'll create as many 3D views as they need to as, right, as well. So I'm going to rename this one Section 1 3D View. We'll go ahead and create another default 3D. We'll turn on the section box. And we'll orient it to the other section. And then we'll look at it like this so you can see a little easier. And if you have to, you can take that section box and hide it. And again, rename the view. And so now that we've got some sense of what the 3D model point cloud file looks like in the Revit environment, we can start modeling against it. Um, I'm going to adjust the view range here just so it's easier to see. And um, from the data that we've been given, we can make some design um, changes and or modeling if we need to. I'm going to use the standard Revit walls. And as you can see, it actually agrees with the snapping of that point cloud data. So I can start here, and I can go out to here and start modeling the information. Now, if you try to use the align command to align to the edge of that, you cannot. So what you can do is you can click and create a reference plane on that edge of that object, and then use the align command to align to that uh, plane, if you will. That way it's a little easier and tighter. There is what you can tell uh, columns. So we can go over here, we'll put in some architectural columns. And then if for purposes of design, we might want to create a wall, interior wall, say this one. And we'll put it on the finished face exterior. We'll take it to there and to here. And then we'll take this one back down to here. So you can use this kind of workflow to start building your 3D Revit model based upon the actual point cloud data. If you have to, you can always hide that temporarily or permanently, and you can start to see the design work that's coming out based upon what you're creating. So if I go back over to level one, maybe, for example, we want to create uh, a storefront in this wall. If I go over to the wall command, I can pick storefront. And we'll do it unconnected, say, 5 feet. And we'll put it inside the location line of this wall like this. And maybe this one as well. If we have to, obviously, since it's, they're Revit objects, we can align them. If we look at that in 3D, we can now start to see the design iteration coming into fruition. And this is all based upon the existing 3D point cloud file. That's it. That's a quick tutorial on um, how to bring a point cloud file into Revit. Thanks for watching my screencast, and please don't forget to give me a thumbs up.